guys, Ashley Oliver here, designing for Robin Marie Smith and the beautiful products at Paper Bag Studios. And today I'm going to be making a custom traveler's notebook um, inspired by these products. And I have some of the cute little file tabs, some Art Pops cards from Wait For Me, the Garden Muse rubber stamp sheet, and the Doodles and Daters rubber stamp sheet, as well as the Wait For Me sticker tape. Now, what I'm going to do is work on this piece of watercolor paper that I have cut down to size. Um, my idea is that I want it to be um, like half of, of eight and a half by 11 with a little extra room for hangover. And this is going to be for a dear friend of mine who is making a big move cross country and is driving it, of course. And I was inspired by these journaling stickers and kind of the houses, and I just thought it would be really fun to pop those around on the interior of the Traveler's Notebook so that she has a place to kind of jot things down and to collect her memories on their journey to their new home. And so I'm going to be doing lots of mixed media things, some face drawing probably, and just having a good time on the cover to give her something customizable to just throw in her purse and have on their long trip. So I will play you some music and I'll be kind of popping back in here and there um, just to tell you what's going on with my project and I hope you enjoy. So I've gone ahead and applied some of the sticker tape just in various ways onto my cover here and you'll notice that I'm working on my cover completely open so where you see me drawing will be the front of the book and then where you see the tape to the left will be the back of the book and what I'm working on now is just getting my face laid out on my cover here just doing some drawing and shading in with a basic number two pencil. Now that I have my face all sketched out, I'm just using some gesso here and some loose brush strokes to soften the images on the tape and to add some areas of highlight to the face. And what this is going to do is later on create a resist when I apply uh, watercolor to my face. Um, and now I am selecting some stamps that I'm going to use and just getting a little bit more gesso here on that piece of tape there and getting all of this nice and dry. And now I'm going to go ahead and use those stamps that I got prepared. I am using a waterproof ink in black and I'm beginning by just kind of stamping near where her hair would be and just kind of creating a cluster and sort of like layering outward from there just for some visual interest and texture and to add another um, you know sort of design element to the page and you'll see that I'm not using any sort of mount on my stamp I'm just using my hands and it's working great. I love this little flower image there. And just kind of getting some extra texture here with some um, ghost stamping. And there we have it. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and start shading in my face a little bit with some watercolor. And I'm taking most of my color cues from the colors that are in 
the tape uh, stickers that I put down. And so what I'm doing is just applying areas of color where there would be shadow in the face, um, just the darkest areas. So um, when you're doing this on your own, you can kind of just look in a mirror and see where the darkest areas of your face are, and that's where you would apply the darkest areas of color on your piece. Now I'm just using some water to kind of blend that out so I don't have such harsh lines. And then I'm continuing on just layering some more color, keeping the darks where I want the most shadow, and then just fading out with my paintbrush. And once again, just kind of pulling color inspiration from the pieces of tape. So I'm just going to continue on in this way, adding more color to my face. Okay, so I got all my color on, got her nice and dry with my heat tool, and now I'm using a black pit pen to just go through and add some really nice contrast into the darkest darks of the face. And doing this really creates a sense of dimension, and the more contrast you have on your drawing, the more capable you will be of making it look more three-dimensional. Uh, in other words, when you're drawing on a page, you're working in two dimensions, right? You know, it's not a sculpture. And so the way that we create kind of more impact visually and make something really pop off the page is through contrast and the use of highlights and shadows. So that is what I'm working on here. Uh, so I got my black lines in, and now I'm going through with a little bit more gesso just to create some more areas of lightness that will just kind of pop off the page and also add to that sense of contrast. And I've chosen to use gesso because it dries relatively quickly, and I like the way that it layers over watercolor. It's not too opaque. It has a little bit of a transparency to it, which I like. So now I'm going in here to this Art Pops card pack to pick a card that I'm going to use for my title. And so I'm just kind of trying to pick the best colors. And I've gone with this one here that has kind of a grungier look. I want the title to feel a little bit more masculine. Um, this trip 
that my friend is going on also includes her husband, of course, so I don't want this um, traveler's journal to be all about this, you know, feminine little lady. So, um, as you could see there, I just sketched out my letters and cut them out, freeform with the scissors, and now I'm applying them with some perfect paper adhesive making sure to get the glue on both the back and the front of the letters so that they're really sealed in. I don't want them popping up on their journey. So now I'm just rounding the corners here. I like the look that that gives to a traveler's notebook. I think it just has a really nice finished feel to it. So I'm going to let that dry completely and then work on some of the interior pages here. So I'm rounding those corners as well. And this is just an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock. And then of course I am folding it in half to create the shape of the booklet. Just creasing it nicely there. And what I wanna do is create some pockets. So I'm using the larger Art Pops card uh, here to create a sort of a little journaling spot. And I'm just tearing the top and what I want this to do is be the first thing when you open the Traveler's Notebook. I want there to be this little pocket that has a place for journaling and a place where she can maybe stick like receipts or um, any sorts of like tickets or things like that. And so what I've done is I've stitched around the card onto the base and I have stamped that label image there added a piece of sticker tape, and now I'm simply just layering all of that onto the front of the page where this is going to sit in the notebook. Now what I'm doing here is making a little journaling spot. I'm just adhering that card with leftover pieces of the um, decorative tape, and then just sliding it in there like so. I want to get a little bit of twine for some texture and to allow for a handle. So just stapling that on with the tiny attacher. And then I want to make sure that it fits in there nicely like so. Okay, so now I'm just going back like I did on the cover with some gesso and kind of softening the colors. I like the way it sort of blends visually into the background. Um, and I just really like that look of sort of blending to the background and then gradually popping back out at you. So the white gesso really helps to do that and I applied it very thinly so that it's not too opaque. Okay, so now I want to create some like folder style pockets. So I'm using the larger Art Pops card and I just trimmed the corner there and then sewed it around the edge. And so I have little pockets that are nice on each side of those pages. And you'll see that more in the end when I do a flip through of everything. And so here I have the cover and I'm just getting it nice and folded. And I'm using my bone folder for that so that I get a good crease, but that is certainly not necessary if you don't have one. And there we go getting it all nice and set. And at this point, I wanna add a little bit to my title. Right now, all it says is go. So I wanna add the words here we. So it says here we go. So I just wrote them out with a black pit pen and then I'm just cutting them and pasting them on. I got them glued down with some perfect paper adhesive. And now I'm going around my G here and then the O as well with my pit pen and quickly smudging it with my finger before the pit pen has a chance to really dry. And that's just adding some shading around my letters there. And once I have that shading all set, I'm going to go back in with a little bit of white to just kind of brighten up the letters some as well. I want them to have a good sense of light and dark. So here I am with a smaller brush and the gesso again, just brightening that up. Okay, so now I just want to come in with a little bit more color. This cover has a lot of white on it, which isn't a bad thing, but I would like more color uh, than what I have. So I'm using my watercolors and just a very wet brush. Now remember, I am working on watercolor paper, so it's handling all of this wetness really nicely. And I'm just letting it kind of move around and working on the back and the front at the same time. 
just to really get a nice application of color going. Okay, so I got all my color on, acrylic paint and all, and while that dries, I'm just going to do some final stamping of these label stamps on the interior of the booklet. Now I have stitched the booklet pages together simply down the middle with my sewing machine. I just did a straight stitch, and now I'm using the stitching marks that are there on the right-hand side from where I sewed those pockets on. I'm kind of using that as a guide as to where to place my stamped images. And so once that is all set, I'm adding these cute little file tabs to the edges of the page. I kind of feel like a mini book isn't complete unless it has some sort of fun goodies hanging out the side. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just using my tiny attacher to adhere them. And I'm not going all the way down, just doing three because I think that is a nice balance. And then I'm going to use some twine and just add a little bit of extra texture. So I'm going to add that in a little loop, kind of just looping it around and then using my tiny attacher just to adhere it. And I'm going to do that to this journaling card as well as to all the little file tabs. You can see I just loop it around my fingers, then pull it off, and then use the stapler to adhere it. So just going in with a little watered down acrylic paint here to add a little bit more color to this opening page that you'll see when you first open up the Traveler's Notebook. And just kind of doing it really lightly, but it's a nice little addition of color. And so while that dries, I'm going to do a little bit more work to the cover. I just, I still want a little bit more color. So here I'm going in with a little bit of gesso to kind of blend some things. Just getting it sort of ready for me to add lots more color. I want to include some more flesh tone in this to kind of just really breathe her to life. And also give a little bit more interest up in the area uh, at the top of her head. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that.
that is done and good and dry. And now I have basically the back side of my cover and I'm using this stamp to do some patterning. And I chose this one because it has a large portion of what we might consider negative space and sort of that circular element. And I thought it would be fun if she wanted to, you know, do any journaling, jot any notes down, or it's a fun place to maybe do some doodling and coloring. So I felt like this gave some options for some different things inside the journal. And so there you can see the pattern complete. I think it's really fun. And that makes a nice little addition to the inside of it there. Now just for some final, final details, I'm going back in with some shading using my number two pencil. Just adding in um, just some areas of dark and gray, kind of where I want some more emphasis on her face, a little bit more of that contrast, really defining the eye there and getting the shading really nicely popping out by the nose area. So I like the little touch that this adds. And then I want to do a little doodling as well with the pencil, maybe some whimsical circles, that sort of thing. So I love when working this way, you can just really keep layering and layering. And if I were to do something here that I didn't like, of course I can erase it. Or if that didn't work, there's always more white paint. So I don't ever really worry about messing up. I just have a good time and I just know that I can cover it up. Just getting that little doodle going there. Now I'm using my white Signo just to pop in some little highlights in this pattern up here and in the eye area. A little bit down in that flower. Now for some scribbly circles. Alrighty, that is my completed cover and I have stitched the inside pages. Now let's take a little flip through here. When I stitched the inside pages, I did a zigzag stitch in the top inch and the bottom inch and then a straight stitch on the rest and that will help keep it really secure. And I have learned from experience that if it is only a straight Stitch, it can act like a perforated page and it will tear out easily which sometimes might be the desired effect but certainly not for this project. So there we have it, the completed custom traveler's notebook for my friend on her new adventure and I had so much fun putting it together. Thank you all for watching and you can find all of these goodies and more at paperbagstudios.com or shoprobinmarie.com. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.